Full copy of any recorded match is available to buy for scouting, training and analysis purposes. We also offer services to individual players who are looking to build a video portfolio. For more information, please contact us on Twitter or send an email to williams at wdsports.co.uk. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to WD Sports, episode 28 of the ESO Football Show. Ilford came into their weekend match against Sawbridgeworth Town in 13th position, only one point behind Stanway Rovers. Sawbridge Worth had only won one of their last five matches and were behind West Essex with a goal difference of nine. A win for the Robins would lift them into 10th as West Essex's match against Barking Side was postponed because of a waterlocked pitch. Ollie Fortune's early shot for Sawbridge Worth sailed through the Ilford defence but missed the goal. But it was the home side who scored first, courtesy of Yemi Adelani in less than 10 minutes. Sawbridgeworth equalised four minutes later as a Danny Wickenden cross was headed neatly into the net by Joe Wright. Douglas Lamar made it 2-1 to Ilford with a superb corner in the 18th minute. Sawbridge Worth then attempted an equaliser from right, but the ball only bounced off the post. The Robins then tried again, but Ilford goalkeeper Hugo Rossetti kept his side's goal clear. Ilford's Alejandro Sagane Barber tried this long-range shot from just outside the 18-yard box, but Sawbridge Worth keeper James Askew punched the ball away. Another Sawbridge Worth cross fell to Ollie Fortune, but he was brought down by Rossetti. Great teamwork from Yemi Adalami and Colin Zatubra nearly extended Ilford's lead, but James Askew was quick to stop them. Ilford still kept trying, but this shot only went over the crossbar. Sawbridge Worth left back Lou Monk's shot was aimed too high as well. Joe Wright went for the equaliser, but Rossetti kept the ball out of the all for goal. Oh, oh, 
Lou Monk again shot the ball too high and it went over the crossbar. <laughs> Sawbridge Worth keeper James Askew may have taken the ball from Yemi Adelani but he should have paid more attention to it as it nearly went over the line. Daryl Doolan tried this lovely long range shot only for the ball to fall into the hands of Hugo Rossetti. Sawbridge Worth's persistence finally paid off in the 55th minute when Ollie Fortune took advantage of a Tom Jellyman cross to head the ball into the net. The Ilford players were not happy about this and complained that Fortune had been offside. The referee then consulted with the linesman and after a short discussion the goal was allowed to stand. You can't run from behind, do you? That's the same popsy line from the game. Yeah! <laughs> Fortune then went for the chance to draw Sawbridge worth ahead, but Rossetti was too quick for him on this occasion. The level score wouldn't last long as Yemi Adelani made it 3 2 to Ilford a few minutes later. Sawbridge Worth were keen to stay in the game, but this cross went over the bar. <laughs> Ilford were looking to extend their lead, but Lorich Diakiese missed the goal. Collins at Tubra had his chance too, but was unlucky to miss as well. Julian Lloyd's effort was stopped by the post as Sawbridge Worth continued their quest to equalise. James Askew didn't watch the ball in his attempt to stop the Ilford attack, but luck was again on his side as Robins captain Lewis Deemer kept the ball out. Things hotted up in the final minutes of the game as Danny Wilkinson was deemed to have been fouled by Steve Sylvester Ajundua and the referee awarded Sawbridge worth a penalty. Joe Wright stepped up to take the shot, but Hugo Rossetti kept the ball away. With one last throw of the dice, Tom Jellyman aimed for goal with this free kick, but Rossetti was too quick for him. Ilford's win now moves them ahead of Sawbridge worth and the Foxes are now 11th, but still behind Stanway. Walthamstow were hoping to cause an upset when they hosted Essex senior league leader Stansted. The Blues hadn't lost a league match since November and were aiming to extend their lead of four points even further as their nearest rival Holbridge sports match against Saffron Walden Town was postponed because of a waterlogged pitch. <laughs> Walthamstow were keen to edge ahead early on in the game, but Leon McKenzie's effort went over the crossbar. Stansted were keen to add a goal of their own too, but Walthamstow stood their ground in this goal mouth frenzy. The Blues didn't give up trying, but Captain Billy Coyne's free kick was aimed too high and clattered off the away stand. Walthamstow would soon be reduced to 10 men as Leon McKenzie 
was sent off by referee Jide Ogunba for offensive language. Stansted were keen to punish Walthamstow further, but this goal by the attacking forward was disallowed. Connor Hammond's cross was blocked by the Walthamstow defence, but Stansted protested handball, which the referee waved aside. James Pegram was keen to be the one to open the scoring for Stansted, but his shot went over the wall. Jordan Palmer took advantage of a cross from Connor Hammond, but Walthamstow goalkeeper James Drasgrouse got a hand to the ball. As the first half wound down, the home side had a couple of chances at goal, but they didn't work, although Dwayne James came close. Stansted were looking to break the deadlock early on in the second half, but Jack Foland's shot was saved by James Drasgrouse. James Pegram had another chance to score against his former club, but Drasgrouse's fingers were too quick for him. Stansted still weren't giving up, and Billy Coyne's free kick almost rewarded their persistence, but the Walthamstow defence was still rock solid. Dwayne James tried his luck at scoring for the Stags, but Stansted goalkeeper Charlie Turner pounced on the ball quickly. Pegram had another chance yet again to score, but his shot on this occasion missed the left post. Coyne then set up another free kick, but the Walthamstow defence were again too strong. Walthamstow substitute Luke Stanley crossed the ball to Dwayne James, who should have taken advantage of a slip-up from Stansted goalkeeper Charlie Turner. Walthamstow would break through when Vinnie Murphy delivered a lovely cross to Marcus Bowers, whose tap of the right foot resulted in the opening goal for the Stags with eight minutes to go. Stansted were eager to equalise as soon as possible, but Billy Coyne's free kick went over the crossbar and into the stand. A corner scramble between both teams fell the way of Walthamstow's Lee Flynn, but his attempt to lob Turner went high over the crossbar and into the stands. Jack Mitchell's cross for Stansted should have gone the way of Jack West, but James Drasgrouse blocked any attempt at an equaliser. Sam West, already on a yellow card, was sent off for a foul on Dwayne James. Walthamstow's win means the Stags moved above Woodford Town in the table to fifth, while Stansted still lead the standings by four points.